welcome to Asian Pulse Television. I'm your host, Chantel Chand. Thank you for tuning in to your informative and educational network. We are broadcasting from the unceded territories of the Semiamu First Nations, Keitsi, and Kwantlen First Nation. January is known for Alzheimer's Awareness Month, memory loss that disrupts daily life and may be a symptom of Alzheimer's, in other words, also known as dementia. Alzheimer's is a brain disease that causes a so slow decline in memory thinking, and reasoning skills. There are 10 warning signs and symptoms, that, and we will bring in an expert into our studio to talk about this in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. Bell Let's Talk 2024. The Kids Help Phone launches their largest youth mental health movement. Bell Let's Talk promotes mental health awareness, acceptance, and, addic and addictions. You can save the date. Bell Let's Talk Day is on January 24th. Let's kick off the year in action for mental health together. Bell Let's Talk is a mental health initiative and the largest corporation to commit to mental health in Canada, focused on four key action pillars. Fighting the stigma, improving access to care, supporting world-class research, and leading by example in workplace for mental health. I'll be right back after we get some words from our sponsors. United Pellets and Crates is located at 11585-134th Street in Surrey, BC. Give Sam Dooler a call at 604-760-2028 or call the office number at 604-634-2001. You can also visit the website which is www.unitedpelletsandcrates.com or send us email at info at pelletsandcrates.com. If you would like to be our sponsor and want to sponsor any segment of the show, please let us know by calling the number in our credits. We have in our studio Sergeant Rita Raj and Detective Julie Gilmore from Vancouver Police Department, and they are here to talk about how to stop scam preventions for seniors. Have a look. Happy New Year's to all of you. This is the first show for 2024. Happy New Year's to everybody. And this show, Asian Pearls, have been on air for the last 27 years. So thank you being such a faithful audience and keep watching Asian Pearls and giving us the feedback. We want to start off this new year with something that is very, very important to all of us. As we know, you might have had that somebody got scammed, correct? Well, I have, and somebody was even trying to scam me as well. I work in the community, people know me, people like me, which I'm not shy or nothing, but scammers are there. And to bring awareness and talk about that, Vancouver Police Department or VPD have started a program. It's called Stop Scam Prevention or Stop Prevention Scam. It's either way, it doesn't matter. It means the one thing. It means that the scammers are scamming most of the time the most vulnerable population, which are, are our seniors. So VPD with the Vancouver Foundation, they have started this program. And two of the women from VPD offices are in our studios. And you also might have seen that at the bus stop ads. And if you are driving in Vancouver, watch out for these two women. Their pictures are on the ad in the bus stops. And they are talking about the same thing, about scam prevention for seniors. And they have done many events with different communities and uh, they are planning to do many more in 2024. So on my right is Sergeant Rita Raj. You might have seen, had on the radio, on the forums and all that, and she is with VPD. And next to Rita is Julie Gilmore, and she is the detective of crime prevention, and she is also with scam prevention. So these two women, cops, are in our studios to talk about how can you prevent stem, scams for yourself and for your loved ones and those people you know around you. So with that, I will pass that on to Rita. Rita, just say a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in policing and why is this scam prevention is so close to you and you are doing this work? Well, thank you very much for having us on the show here today. It's an honor to be here. Uh, we have, I've been a police officer for it's my 17th year with the Vancouver Police Department. I have worked on in operations on the road. I've been in our major crime and our sex crimes unit, and I'm currently uh, on a secondment with the RCMP. Uh, we started uh, seniors programs. We've been doing seniors programs for the past eight years 
seniors, but this is a new program that uh, scam prevention for seniors uh, that we just started uh, in the spring of last year and launched it in June. So we've been on a road show since June of 2023 and we've been all over Vancouver uh, providing seniors, their loved ones, um, and their adult children information about scams and how to prevent themselves from becoming victims. Uh, Julie will talk a little bit about what our current trending scams are, uh, and then we can tell you a bit more about the program. <laughs> I'll pass it to Julie. Hi. So I'm Detective Constable Julie Gilmore, and um, like I said, I work with the BPD in the major crime section in our robbery section. Um, so some of the main scams that have been affecting seniors particularly are bail scams, um, romance scams, and anything that's via text or email, some type of communication that you receive that opens up that scam window. Yeah, so we've seen a, a real increase and an influx in the grand child bail scams. I'm sure they're, you've heard of them. They're prevalent in the community uh, all over North America. And what's happening in, in that particular scam is we've got uh, people calling, posing as the police, and uh, telling the seniors that their grandchild is in custody. They've been arrested for, they use all sorts of different uh, offenses, you know, for impaired driving, for example, and they need bail money. They'll even go as far as putting somebody else on the line um, and saying this is your grandson or granddaughter and they put the person on the phone and they'll call and they'll play on the heartstrings of their grandparents saying I'm in custody, I need help, we need bail money and uh, the grandparents feel bad so they say okay, they give them an amount, it can be anywhere 5000 15000 whatever the amount that they've come up with and then they send people to your front door so they'll get you to give them your address they will come to your front door pick you up in a taxi uber or their you know whatever mode of operation they have or rental uh, they and then they'll drive a lot. A lot of times the seniors will either go to the bank prior to them arriving and have the money and have it in an envelope for that person picking it up or they will dr take the senior to the bank themselves and wait outside until the senior comes back with the, the, the uh, ca cash and then drop the senior back off. And uh, that is really trending. We've, had, we've seen an uptake in those crimes. They're all over the lower mainland and they, they're hard to track down the suspects because they are generally taking place in Ontario or overseas, that's where you're getting the calls from. And uh, I mean, what we say to that is to the seniors uh, on the show that are listening, please, if police are, if somebody's calling you saying that they're the police department, uh, police are not calling you. We do not call, <laughs> this is not a practice in policing and, ca and Canadian policing, we do not call and ask for bail money. And we definitely will not be sending police to your front door to collect that money. So, you know, we recommend that you have a code word or a password with your family members. So when you do get that call, you guys can have that password or, you know, your grandchild can tell you that. Or we, we suggest that you just hang up and phone your own family. A lot of times what these scammers are doing is they're saying there's a gag order or non-disclosure order mm -hmm. where they're saying, you know what, don't tell anybody. Well, right away that should be a red flag. Please, if, if you're watching the show and you're a senior or a loved one, tell your senior in your life that there is no gag order, non-disclosure order in place and no police officer will ever call for any kind of bail request and, and we definitely aren't in the business of coming and collecting that from your front door. So that's one of our biggest ones that we are seeing right now. Uh, Julie will touch base on the uh, all the text messaging from the banks. Yeah, and just to follow up with you, if you don't have a code word, um, you don't have one in place and you get a call, don't be afraid to hang up. You can always contact police and we'd be more than happy to help you figure out if it is a scam or not. <clears throat> in regards to the text messages and emails, we've probably all received them. Um, they're constantly changing, so it's hard to stay up to date on what the most recent ones are, but often they'll include messages like your bank card or your debit card's been compromised um, and that you need to log in and provide information or that you owe um, amounts to the Canada Revenue Agency or in contrast it might be that uh, there is money available to you, maybe a package has been um, is waiting to be um, delivered to your house and then they'll ask for a fee but they all generally require you to either contact somebody go through a website 
or call somebody. And if you have any questions about those, the best thing to do is to go directly through the provider. Never open up the emails, never use the links that are provided. You can always go directly. So for example, if you get a message from Royal Bank of Canada, RBC, and you're not sure, you can go straight into your own, using your own links or your websites or call your bank and find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're, what they're doing is they're using high pressure tactics. Yeah. They mm -hmm. want to, you to react. They want it fast. So they're throwing things at you. They're, they're convoluting the conversation so you're not even you can't even think straight that you're being you know you're able to ask the right questions uh, and th these are all tactics just hang up go to the bank in person um, don't the, fall into yeah. any of these and I was also gonna tactics. say sometimes they call and it's 1866 or 1800 number but the next time they same the scammers will call with your local 604 number and you said you must be your neighbor or somebody went to the grocery store, somebody is calling. So you end up end up picking up the phone, right? Because you don't, you know, sometimes 1-800-1-866, sometimes you say I didn't buy anything, it's fine, I'm not. And uh, not to answer the call. I think the best thing, like they say, just to hang up, whatever doesn't make you understand just hang up the phone and if they keep calling let them keep on calling let them because you know what when i say that cra if they are after you the money they will never phone they will always send something in writing That's right. to the address because if you have filed your cra last year they have your address mm -hmm. that's how they send you refund that's and if you are overpaid or they need more money from you they they communicate with you or correspond mm -hmm. with emails. So don't never say that. I mean, that's one phone call missed. That's fine. You actually make a, a very good point there, Camila, in, in, in terms of the phone number that appears on your call display. So uh, there's a ta technology to spoof phone numbers. So they're actually, uh, these scammers are get, uh, quite sophisticated. They are using police departments. So they'll say Vancouver Police will appear on your call display uh, or Surrey RCM or Burnaby RCMP or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's not actually coming from that phone number. If that does happen to you and it does display Vancouver Police Department, I can assure you right now on behalf of the Vancouver Police Department, it's not us calling. We are not calling for bail money. And you can always hang up and call our non-emergency line to confirm if you had a police officer call you or any other police department for that matter. Yeah, and all of these agencies like Canada Revenue, CRA, all um, banks, uh, police, we will not ask for payments in Bitcoin, gift cards, those are not usual payments. Right away, those should be flags that there's some kind of scam taking place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a scam doesn't happen to those people who you think, oh, they are home alone and they're living by themselves. It happened to me even. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very outgoing, very outspoken, speak English very well, understand. And they said, don't hang up the phone, go there. And I said, how could I work from here to there with phone in my hand? Mm -hmm. Can I hang up and call, call you back or I can call or you can call me? Then they said, okay. The minute I say, okay, then I start phoning people. And they said, he never phoned me back. But if I would have worked with my phone number to wherever they wanted me to go, then I'm still engaged with the scammers, right? Mm -hmm. So it's so sophisticated, like you said that you can caught into this. So it's very, very important that if somebody just hang up the phone, that's what my children have told me in YouTube, mm -hmm. just hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. If they need it, if your grandson and all that is in jail, they need bail money and all that, something will happen and always have your somebody else present while you are talking to them. And even sometimes I think, Rita, maybe you can also say, my son is here or my daughter is home, Do you, I don't understand what you are saying. Can you talk to them? Mm -hmm. They will hang up very quickly too. Right. I mean, the, the scammers are becoming more sophisticated. This is actually <laughs> going to get more complicated with AI, yeah. with artificial intelligence. It's, it's now going to sound like your grandchild, yeah. uh, which is really going to make things more complicated and hard for seniors when they hear their grandchild on the phone asking for help. But like we say, hang up they can call back. If it's legitimate and it's your grandchild that needs that help, hang up, they'll call you back. And then phone your family members and find out if it's if it's really them in trouble. So you are doing these forums at different places you have done, like I say, just because you are, uh, just because your funding is from Vancouver Police Foundation and you are required to do in Vancouver. 
So how many different communities have you reached out and what was their response? Our, our response has been very positive. So we, uh, we created this program and launched it in June of 2023. And we've, uh, we tailor our sessions to the demographics. So we've done Cantonese only, we've done Punjabi only. Uh, we've got a lot of them scheduled this year in different languages like Japanese, Punjabi, uh, English, Cantonese. So what the program is, is that if you're interested in having the Vancouver Police Scam Prevention for Seniors program, uh, you, what you need is you need 50 or more people, a venue, and uh, contact Julie or I, and we will then, you know, we can talk about the details, and then we will decide if it, if it, we can schedule you in for this year and bring our team, uh, and we have a, a quite a quite a comprehensive team. So we've got our investigators from our major crime section, we've got our financial crime section, cyber crime, and Julie and I also present on various different scams and distraction thefts. And uh, we provide food or snacks, depending on the time of day for the session. And that's all covered by the Vancouver Police Foundation. They've been a, a huge contributor. This program wouldn't be possible without yeah. them. And uh, we bring our full team, and our sessions last two to three hours. And so far, we've done a number of them. We've reached over 800 seniors, and our feedback has been quite positive. And who are your attend attendees? Uh, who attends your? Can the parent, well, is for seniors, so even if the senior is not able to get out of the house because of wheelchair or disability, can the children come and attend and get all this information and pass it on to their loved ones? Yeah, that's correct. So it's for seniors, but it's also for their loved ones or their caretakers. And we encourage you, if you are uh, available, to attend together or at least attend so that you can give that information and share it with them. We have we have a very diverse uh, group of presenters. So we have over forty people on the team, uh, which consists of police officers and civilian professionals, and they speak. All, we have all sorts of languages, so we can tailor it to the demographic that uh, is present. Is present, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, the best thing that I can think of that VPD has done. I know that you guys have done a lot of many uh, different. Uh, for, not forums, but projects, but um, nobody we ever did about scam prevention for seniors. And when you think of that, seniors are the most vulnerable, and we have lost over, what, $10 million in one year, and these are the reported cases, right? Yeah. So in 2022, according to the Canadian uh, uh, Anti-Fraud Centre, uh, $10.1 million loss uh, was reported. That doesn't. That's. There's a lot more than that. It, that's just the reported cases, um, and people feel ashamed and they feel, you know, they, they feel embarrassed and they don't want to report it. But we are encouraging people that if you are or have become are a victim of any type of scams, to contact your local police department and and report it. And the sooner you report it, the better, because we then can em de employ different investigative techniques to, you know. Get a hold of these these identify. different identify these different crime groups. Has it ever happened that amount of money that a senior lost has been recovered by the scammers? Has uh, it? Locally, it, generally, if the money is um, oh, transferred locally, there's a much higher chance of us being able to recover the money. Unfortunately, once it um, is gone outside of Canada, for example, Bitcoin or et cetera, e-transfers, it becomes very hard for investigators to um, find that money again. So that's usually the biggest thing. And that's part of our program is we want to prevent that from happening in the first place and give seniors the information so that we can prevent it from happening, which really is the best case because then the scammers don't get the money. And we're going to be changing our sessions and keeping them up to date as new trends become um, available or current. Another thing is that I also found that these scammers, they steal others' profiles. If they are doctors, engineers, or high profile and all those people, and they are hiding behind that to scam you and how much they love you and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, give, we are going to get married, like you said, and mm -hmm. it's all going to... The minute I think anybody asks for the money and you haven't met that in person, I will hang up the phone and delete everything, delete them. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here to say. <laughs> we're, we, 
don't send anybody money. Yes. The scams are sophisticated. They're running rampant. They're very prevalent in the community right now. These scammers are working all around the world. They're not necessarily sitting here. They are across the country or they're in a foreign country. Uh, don't send anybody any money and come to our scam prevention programs or give us a call and or email us and we would love to uh, present and bring our roadshow uh, all across Vancouver. And I just wanted to add on that. So, so right now we are currently doing all our scam prevention sessions in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. However, they are open to all all members of the public from any any municipality. So even if you live in uh, Bannaby and you know this this taking place at Ross Street or somewhere else like that, mm -hmm. you can always ask your family, friends or whatever to drive you there or take a SkyTrain, public transportation. Once you go there, they don't ask you for your address, right? You yeah. just are there to get the it's information. Open to, it's open to everybody. Yeah. So and for the South Asian community, our next one for the South Asian community will be on April 7th of this year at Raw Street uh, Temple. And it's going to be from 1 to 4 p.m. And food will be served at 12. So it's a part of the service there. And we're going to bring our, uh, it's going to be a lineup of South Asian members. And the session will be done in Punjabi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you know a group uh, you want to get, there are so many different seniors group around. And if you want to organize something at the community center or something, mm -hmm. just give them a call and just say, this is how many people we have, mm -hmm. and would you be able to come? And like you, like they say, they provide even food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> food is a good thing to attract people. And food, we do prizes. It's a very engaging session. Uh, I know you've been to one of our mm -hmm. sessions. So it's a great platform for people to share their experiences mm -hmm. with others and feel comfortable. It's a safe place where you can go to... to to talk and it's also a great opportunity for us police officers to engage with the public and maybe learn maybe there's new trendings and new scams out there that we're not aware of yet and also i was going to say that if you are that not that senior that is watching the show today or they are your brother your son's daughter's daughter-in-law always make sure take the information and pass it on to them and also educate them talk to them just like we are talking at the family dinner or something mm -hmm. has anybody called what would you say mm -hmm. you know give him give them a little bit of uh, information or what would you say if the scammers are calling how would you answer the phone what would you say i'm going to talk to my son and call you back mm -hmm. they won't let you go mm -hmm. but educate them and always say that okay i'll check or hang up the phone and feel free to call us too yes. if you aren't able to get a group of people but you'd like to attend a session you can contact either Rita or myself or you're welcome to go to um, the vpd.ca website and if you go through the tabs crime prevention seniors you'll find more information on how to contact us and also there's lots of tips and stuff that you might want to read and share with your family members and also if you're attending one of our sessions we do have our tips brochures for the current trending scams in different languages now as well so oh, that's we'll be, we'll, we're tailored that we're tailoring that to each demographic and session that's great last word mm -hmm. from julie what would you like to say if there's one thing that can stuck in anybody's head about this uh, scam prevention i scene. think that there's something valuable in all of these sessions and information is power so if you're not sure that it's something that you can um, take away um, something valuable from i think that everybody can find something and learn something new yeah uh, we're we're excited we're excited about a program we're excited that it's being very well received by the public and we're excited that we're getting this information out there if we can help you know even if it's one person, it's worth it. And right now we've reached over 800 and we've had numerous inquiries about future uh, sessions. And we're, we're actually booked all the way to June. However, we will, if we get a lot of more requests, we will we'll try our best to fulfill them. So my tip or my last words is that if you have fallen victim, please contact your local police department. Don't be afraid or feel ashamed or embarrassed to report it. There's thousands of people out there that have been in mm -hmm. your shoes and we're asking report it to us so that we can do our best to help you thank you both of you and these are the two women you're going to be seeing at the bus stop if you're driving in vancouver even if you don't live in vancouver but if you are living in benby we all go to vancouver so these are those two poster women of vpd mm -hmm. on the bus stops and thank you both of you for coming in and for my last word if a schema calls i just hang up I just don't want to hear the voice. I don't care what. Even if my grandson, whatever, don't care. 
you know. I pick up the phone, call my grandson. Is he alive? Is dead? He's in jail? Whatever happened. Yeah. Thank you to both of you for coming in. Yeah. Thank you very much yes. for having us. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Julie Gilmore and Sergeant Rita Raj, for coming and educating our seniors on how to prevent themselves from being scammed. Pink Shirt Day is on February 28th. Pink Shirt Day is a day United Nations declared on May 4th as Anti-Bullying Day. And now, the last Wednesday of each February in Canada, National Pink Shirt Day and Anti-Bullying Day is one that many countries recognize. This is to raise aware awareness and prevent bullying from, and promote kindness and inclusion. Get your pink shirt and wear it and say no bullying. Bell Let's Talk Day is on January 24th. Donate for a great cause so that kids will have a safe hotline to talk to if they need support. The Kids Help Phone is Canada's only 24-7 men mental health service offering free confidential support in English and in French. You can call 1-800-668-6868 or text 686868. Tickets are on sale now for Sevens Vancouver. New this year, Sevens Your Way. This is the second year when the men's team and the women's team will be playing side by side at HSBC Rugby Sevens in Vancouver on February 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Get your tickets now. Tickets at vansevens.com and for more information, please call 604 355 5330. PIC's Mega Job Fair is coming up on February 22nd at the Italian Cultural Center in Vancouver. Over 100 ex exhibitions will be there and over 1,000 people come to the PIC's Mega Job Fair each year. To get your resume ready for new opportunities, come and meet employers who are there to hire you or consider you to be hired for their company. For more information, please call PIC's at 604-596-7722. If you are organizing any events in your community and want us to promote your event, please email us at asianpulse at gmail.com. We've run out of time now, and I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I do bringing it to you. If you ever miss our shows, you can always watch it again on Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m., Thursdays at 8.30 p.m., and Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. All our shows are also broadcasted in Calgary on Channel 10, on YouTube, and on Shaw. All our shows are also uploaded to YouTube under the Camila Singh Shows. If you would like to sponsor this show or any other show that we bring to you, please call 604-537-5123. Before we leave, I will leave you with these thoughts. Grief never ends, but it changes. It passes, not a place to stay. Grief is not a sign of weakness, nor a lack of faith. It's the price of love. I'm your host, Chantel Chand, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. We look forward to seeing all of you next week on the same channel and the same station. In the meantime, take care of yourself and those around you. Bye for now.